What's going on guys, Josh here. And in today's video, I want to help you guys to figure out exactly what ads you should be launching with when you're starting to run ads on Meta. So I wanna use this as a case study because we have a client that we actually launched ads for in the last, uh, in the last week. And he had absolutely no idea what to launch. And we pretty much built out a strategy for him and I thought that it would be super valuable for you guys. So let's quickly dive into my computer and then kind of show you guys what, like the proof behind the pudding and then also I'm gonna give you guys the intention and the purpose of every ad type that we're looking to launch. So right now you can see on the screen, we are on his ad account, oh, his Shopify, right? We launched ads on the 17th and it's now the 26th uh, from the time of this recording. You can see that we've had about $5.7,000 uh, worth of sales, right? Conversion rate's a little bit low, but that's okay because it's a brand new pixel, brand new ad account and so on and so forth, right? Now, what I wanna show you is how much did we spend? We spent about 1,100 or something like that in the last couple of days. So let me just quickly go here, update that. And we've had, yeah, $1,111, right? So if we have a look at the overall MER, because he doesn't have any other traffic from any other sources, we are confident that this is pretty much the only traffic source that we have, okay? So even though Facebook is mis attributing, that's okay, because in a, pre in a video that I'm gonna do later, I'll show you guys the structure of this. But in this video, I wanted to focus entirely on the fact that what ads to run, why you should be running these ones, and hopefully it helps you guys to gain a little bit of clarity when, if you guys are ready to launch ads. Okay, so again, five times, six times rise, uh, well, MER. What ads should you launch with, okay? So the, the purpose of this, right, is to understand when you're first running an ad, on the ad account, you don't know what your messaging should be. You don't know what your audience is resonating with. And my intention with this is to hopefully help you figure that out, all right? So there are three different types of ads that I personally believe that we uh, should launch with, or at least for this particular client, that's what we did, okay? So the first one is going to be message test statics. So these ones here, the purpose, right, is to get an idea of what type of messaging really gets our you know our target audience out of their seat right and then we can track this by using click through rates cost per click cpms and so on and so forth right but the main purpose here is to see oh we might think for example this is a neck product right we might think that get out like fix neck pain at home right is the best kind of USP or angle that we should be using. However, we, we, we have our own bias that we need to you know, either clarify, right, or clear up, okay? So that's why we do a message testing uh, statics um, in, in uh, this particular uh, form, right? So the framework for this is it's, it's simply a static image, right? I'm gonna show you some examples as well, just down below, but it's a static image and we've got an emotive person on the left or the right, right, in the image, right? We need to make sure that they're show eliciting some sort of happiness, some sort of sadness, some sort of pain, right? To Because we as people, we're gonna see that, we're gonna like potentially resonate with them, especially if I'm suffering from neck pain too. And I'm like, man, I feel for the guy, he's, he's suffering from what I'm suffering from, right? The next portion is you need to make sure that you have your product in shot. It's really important that you, yes, we want that message test to be um, uh, to, to play a role. However, we also want to show that if you are suffering from this, if they do self-select and they say yes, this is me, that we introduce them to the product because they're probably very high up in the funnel of unaware or problem aware, right? So we want to start to introduce this product to them to say, hey, there is a solution out there, and start to move them down the awareness funnel. Okay, then uh, we like to try to use brighter colors, right? Brighter colors or just make it clear, right? When we're on uh, the feed and uh, on reels and, and so on and so forth, there's so much going on, right? So we need to grab attention. And with statics, it's very difficult uh, to grab attention without like visual effects and, and so on and so forth. So the best way that I've found that to do this is actually to use either bright colors or a very kind of like um, emotive headline, right? So uh, so yeah, and then focus on keystone headlines. So like I said, that's the next point, right? So. Those are the frameworks. I'm gonna show you an example in just a moment, but I wanna go through like what you will need to, to actually 
you know, do this, right? Number one, you need to know who your customer avatar is, right? Who is your customer avatar, right? Number two, you need your product photos. So if you ha don't have product photos, I mean, go get them, right? You need it. Um, and then if you can, ha try to have like a model plus product in a photo, right? If they're holding the product and so on and so forth, we find that that works the best. If you can't get that though, then one thing that I will say is that you can go out and find stock footage of people kind of with neck pain and so on, but just try to make sure that the stock footage doesn't look like stock footage, right? Make sure it looks like it's actual photo um, and then get a graphic designer, or pay, pay someone on Fiverr, or if you have the graphic design skill, go and blend it so that the product is in shot and they can link it with the actual uh, stock image that you have, right? The tools that you can use is ChatGPT. I've actually created something called a Pathfinder AI Assistant, which is, I'm gonna walk you guys through it in just a moment. And um, in terms of, oh, this is something else. Uh, go down, let me show you the actual examples now. So here is three examples of the ads that we are running, right? So we've got three different types of creative and I've blocked out the actual product and the brand and so on and so forth to protect the, um, the actual client. However, um, I did replace it with this little happy smiley guy, right? Now, as you can see, the message testing, even though it's similar, we, we are attacking neck pain, but we're attacking it from different angles, right? So uh, rehab your neck from home, right? Eliminate neck pain for good, eliminate neck pain from home, right? So even though, yes, there is a bias from the, from the client side, he thinks that this particular uh, headline is gonna work. However, we said, hey, let's just uh, push it out and let's see how this performs, all right? And then we, from, well, after running this test, we were able to determine that the one, uh, eliminate neck pain for good, was indeed the one that performed the best. And you can see here, we've got this DCT message testing, Okay, it says that it's $700, which is uh, incorrect. However, uh, what you can do is you can go over to the side here and let me just move my frame. Okay, you can go here, right? And then boom, go down, go down, go down. And then just below my head, you've got this by dynamic creative element. And then you can go by image, okay? So you've got this image. And then from here, you can determine, okay, well, let's have a look at the skew of spend, right? Look at that. Right, seven hundred and two dollars, six hundred ninety-two dollars was on this particular one ad, and this is the one that's getting the most um, uh, most spent. So one, Facebook is leaning towards this one. It believes that this is going to be the one that's going to get you the sales, right, or whatever your purchase object or your objective is. Let's continue going through, and then you can kind of have a look at some some of the soft metrics as well. You've got your cost per click here. You've got your click through rates, right. Now this one, as you can see. Right? Even though it's spent the majority, if it's spent like 700 bucks, it's still getting 4.5 a link click through rate. That is pretty damn good in my opinion. Right? We're in a few ad accounts now and this is just, uh, it's a big benefit, right? Uh, like it, this is just kind of like, it's, a, it's, it's, it's just an outlier, right? The performance is there, okay? <laughs> Even though the CPM is higher, right? So imagine if we were able to drop the CPM by 50%, what this, uh, like the amount of total clicks that we're gonna get, right? So it's really important to get this resonant, uh, this language testing um, set up right from the beginning. Now, I will uh, quickly mention something. Even though you're doing this message testing um, at the beginning, right? You're only doing this because you don't know um, specifically what your uh, audience is gonna resonate with. Now, when you are getting consistent sales, the one thing you need to remember is that you need to install some sort of first party data or like a post purchase survey so that you can really narrow that down. Because even though you think that yes, and then we validated it, um, that this message is the one that people are resonating with, there may be another uncover, uncovered gem that is out there that you don't know about, okay? So it's really, really important for you to understand that. Now, going back to the actual uh, board here, as I said, coming up with the headlines, right? You're gonna need them. Now, luckily for us, we pretty much just sat down with the client and said, hey, what do you think is the, the reasons why people would wanna buy this? And then from what he told us, we created these headlines. However, what happens if you don't know, right? Imagine you're a beginner, you don't know who your avatar is, you don't know who you're targeting, you don't know what the product, like you know what, uh, 
problem it solves, but you don't know which one, uh, which angle you should really dive into. And that's kind of why um, this was lead into our second piece of Keystone content and uh, using this chat uh, ChatGPT bot that I've actually created. And I will give you guys uh, a link down below as well. All right. So the next one. Uh, we're going to go into that in just a second, okay? So the keystone content, right? So this is this portion right here. This is essentially our our top of funnel, most unaware people don't know what who we are. We're trying to grab them and bring them through, right, to uh, their awareness journey, and then actually go and make a decision to buy. So the purpose here is target unaware, problem aware audiences, really top of funnel, and intro them into the product, and then eventually convince them to buy using direct response. Okay, so there are a couple frameworks that I want to introduce you to that I personally um, have found to work really, really well. So the first one is this uh, Paso framework that I love, 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 love to use, right? And that is, it's an adjustment from uh, the pay, PAS framework, which is pain agitate solution, right? But I just like to add in a little bit more, make it a little bit longer so that people who are more inclined to watch videos on Facebook, on Meta, they have, they get the whole picture, right? So this, uh, let me walk you through it. So pain, pain, agitate, solutions plus the product USPs, like unique selling propositions. Then you wanna show the product in use or have show social proof, right? Saying like, this is how many testimonials we have and so on and so forth. Um, the reason I put in demo there is because of the fact that at the beginning of when you're launching a new product, like uh, our client here, they may not have all those many reviews. So you can't just go and say like, this review is the best, this review is the best and so on and so forth, right? But you wanna, um, you wanna, and then you wanna top it all off with an offer and call to action. The main thing to understand here is that the type of content that you want to go with is you, you and the angle that you want to go with is the most obvious angle that you think um, uh, like applies to your target audience, right? You as the creator, you as the brand founder, you should know who you're serving, what problem you're solving, right? So whatever that biggest pri like biggest uh, problem is, you want to go and double down on that one. Okay, so we're going to show you a quick uh, reference here of an Atria um, uh, using Atria, and I want to show you. Hopefully it loads. Okay, perfect. So let's go here, and then hopefully you guys can hear it as well. I'm just going to put my mic over here so you guys can hear it too. When we feel an itch coming on, we go buy an expensive cream, keep suffering until it's gone. But the problem is seeing the itch in the first place. Of course, it just keeps coming back. I went to my doctor and we finally uncovered what kept throwing off my pH balance and what it ended up being blew me away. It was my laundry detergent. It turns out liquid detergents are full of unnecessary chemicals like fragrances, dyes, and optical brighteners that are horrible for our private parts. They stick to our underwear and disrupt our pH balance, so it's no wonder the edge kept coming back. I can't believe Big Laundry is even allowed to put some of those chemicals in there. I was done buying from them. So I tried almost every alternative and finally found the detergent brand that completely eliminated the edge for good. It's called Earthreeze, and over two million Americans already... So we're at the solution part now. We're those problem agitate, and then now we're this at the solution. This looks like a dryer sheet, but it's actually laundry detergent, and I'm not exaggerating when I say it changed my life. It's a powerful clean without all the unnecessary chemicals that can upset our pH, and it's dermatologist tested, so you know it's safe for our whole body. My itching practically disappeared as soon as I started using this stuff. I could have cried. I was so grateful. Plus, with Earth Freeze, you'll never have to use those bulky, messy plastic jugs ever again. All you do is toss the sheet into your machine, and that's it. It dissolves in the water to clean your clothes. They also come in this thin cardboard packaging that's way better for the planet and saves a ton of space. This detergent has over 40,000 five-star reviews and will refund you in full if they don't work for you. Social proof? Yeah. Plus, they ship right to your door, and you save 40% when you subscribe. If you're soft... Offer. Spring from a relentless itch down there, you need to give them a try. I'm so glad I did. Don't wait. Tap below to get yours now. When we feel an itch come... And call to action. Right, so they pretty much follow through that entire um, that framework, and yes, it is longer. However, it, it really does drive home like what the pain is, why it is a pain in the first place, why this product solves that problem, and like what are the thing about this product that solves it. Then it talks about the social proof and saying like how this is. Um, so much better and so many people have used it. They also in the offer and call to action section, they're not only presenting the offer, but they're also ob uh, fighting objections, right? They have a money back guarantee, they have a blah, 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 right? They're fighting objections. So this is the type of content that you should be running um, whenever you're launching some sort of ad, especially as a keystone piece of content, right? It will take a little bit more time to do this, but 
It's really, really helpful. The next portion is like, you've got your hook, design, outcome, showcase, offer, right? So that, this is a much simpler one, but it still works as as like powerfully as the first one, right? The, uh, the first one actually takes a little bit more to actually build up, but this one is also pretty good. So let's quickly watch it together. So this is essentially um, another simple way of doing it, right? If you just have a lot of B-roll content, you can definitely set this up and it's really, really, um, it can be uh, quite powerful, right? So what you will need to complete this, so you need your customer avatar, you need a script, you need an organized B-roll folder, and then we're gonna have the tools of ChatGPT and then a voiceover A-roll content. So we're gonna take a quick break here and we're gonna kind of pivot because what if you know who, like you have your product, but you don't know how to create the script, you don't know how to figure out the avatar and so on and so forth, right? So that's where we're gonna go into ChatGPT here, right? We've got this little assistant here that I've gone ahead and created. And then let's say for example, um, I'm gonna use this guy here, which is just a random product I found online, right? It's like, you wanna go through this process, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start it, and then as it's processing, I'm gonna pause for your safety, uh, for your time, right? So what we're gonna do is research this product for me. Right. Okay, so we have asked it to get do the research, right? So this is really important because you you're able to teach the AI what specifically like makes your product stand out, right? And you want to start with that. So then next, what I like to do is like, okay, great. Next, please come up with customer avatars. Avatars, unaware, whoops, unaware plus problem aware only. Um, for this product, okay? And then you just ask it because it's already been trained in the format that I like to use and you guys will get access to that as well. So let's quickly go through and then let's pause it and then we'll come back in just a moment. Okay, so it's gone through and completed the two avatars that we wanna use. So we, fo we told it to focus on unaware and problem, uh, problem aware uh, categories only, right? Because we want to make sure that the ads that we run, we can go broad, right? Or very broad interest based, especially if you have a, a lower um, spend ad account, right? So it's figured out like this Marcus Reed dude, right? It's telling us what his lifestyle and behaviors are. What are the awareness levels of this? What are previous solutions that he's tried? right? State before the purchase, frustrated with neck stiffness, occasional pain after long runs, right? Day after. So this is kind of like talking about the aspirational, what he's going to experience, what his fears are. So we can go ahead and object against those. We're in our call to action, right? Saying like wasting money. So it's like full money back guarantee, right? And then never have to suffer from a poor posture ever again, right? Pain points, it's got this. Consequences, Right, what's his dream? And it kind of repeats itself a little bit, but it gives you a, it paints you a nice picture. Okay, so then from this, what you can do is, is get, okay, next, let's create, please create a video script <clears throat> with scene breakdowns of using the Paso framework I've uploaded. Right, so it's this AI already has the password framework explained to it. So you can just send this, and then what it's gonna do is it's gonna shoot out a video script specifically for this particular product to this pain point, and we're gonna go and uh, we can use this as a base reference guide, especially if, if you don't have anything um, that you can work off of at the beginning, right? So we'll let this pause, I uh, will pause it, and then we'll come back in just a second. 
All right, perfect. So it's gone ahead and given us seven different scenes, right? So it's given us a closing, the offer and call to action, social proof, product demo, introducing the solution, agitation, and then intro, which is the pain, right? So one thing I will say, and just a quick caveat to this, is that even though this is not perfect, it's definitely not gonna be perfect right from the get-go. You, It is up to you to like really polish it up, right? So that's why I actually recommend companies like Foreplay, right? Foreplay, we have a, um, this is a company that I love, love using, right? Foreplay, and then, so I've actually canceled them, but Atria is even better, right? In my opinion, okay? So either Foreplay or Atria, because I've actually canceled my Foreplay account just so I can jump on Atria, right? So both of them, I'll leave it links in the description, There's no paid, nothing like that, but it is something that is helpful, um, especially to understand what type of ad or language you should be using to polish this up, okay? So let's quickly read through this. After long hours of work, my neck always feels stiff and sore. I thought it was something I had to live with, right? And then it gives us the visual, right? Then the next agitation, like many of us, Marcus tried everything, pills, patches, even expensive therapies, but relief was only temporary. Right? Introducing the solution, Marcus, then, um, Marcus says, then I found the Iron Neck 3.0. It promised not just relief, but a real solution. Then it's got demonstration, showing how it's like adjustable tension, it's comfortable fit, you can move it in, three, in a 360 degree rotation. Right, and then it has the visual of him unboxing it, using it, using showing it in use. Right, then it goes through and says social proof. Right, saying like, hey, there's this one review that relates to the pain point that we're talking about. It's a game changer on my neck pain, gone, and I'm stronger than ever. Then we've got our offer and call to action. It's like, don't let your don't let your neck pain hold you back. Try this the, uh, today. There's even a 30 day money back guarantee. If you buy today, you also get. 10% off your first purchase. Visit ironneck.com uh, to order now, right? So obviously this is not 100% perfect, but it is a very good start. It's much easier to get AI to get you to about 50 or 60% and then you edit it based off your own intuition and your knowledge and your expertise and then polish that script. The one caveat I will say about this is that this is kind of talking from a full like filming perspective but if you can film it from your perspective like you as the user and you have the product and you just go through and talk in the first person to the camera and then have video editors or edit it yourself using CapCut um, to just chop and change between b-roll and a-roll right so a-roll just quickly is me talking to the camera b-roll would be me unboxing something right so you want to quickly chop between those every kind of three to four seconds to keep that pace of the video and the ad okay so <clears throat> that's how i would go and do this right so this allows us to get to 50 percent, and then we edit it okay so that's how we use this right and then if you don't know what you're like uh, going back to the first type of content which is the message testing statics if you don't know what headlines to use once you've figured once you've taught the ai program to know who your avatar is and the awareness level then you can ask it to say hey what are some emotive headlines that i can use to grab attention right and some different positionings that i can test and then it will spit out a few examples now this is <coughs> something also that will be helpful, especially if you can source this at the beginning. Now, if you can't source it, that's completely fine. However, it is helpful because it acts like as a retargeting piece of content and as credibility, right? Showing that there is social proof for this particular product. Now, one thing that you also can do, and one thing I forgot to mention before, was that with this Keystone piece of content and UGC style, you can actually link them two together. So if you were to get someone to read a script that follows through the pain, agitation, solution, demo, offer, call to action, whilst having a UGC, that's actually molding them together. And you can just have one or two pieces of content that can allow you to, you know, pretty much spend more there, right? Really kind of focus on getting one good piece of creative and then pushing it out there. And then if you have two alternative hooks, that means you have three videos that you can really kind of rely on, especially at the very beginning, right? With a new pixel and so on and so forth, right? But if you were to split it out, we'll kind of talk about this one uh, separately as well. So the frame is pretty much the same, right? We're gonna have a hook, how they were suffering from this problem. So th this is this is a key key point of UGC, right? You're trying to paint the picture of I used to be here, right? And now I'm here, right? Point A to point B. But what's the bridge? It's the product, right? So you want to show them I was suffering from this, 
Here's the solution. Here's why it's good. Show them the demos, how they feel now that it's solved, which is the point B, and then finally have and offer a call to action. So what I like to do is I pretty much do uh, have all three pieces of content and then I'll, I let Facebook to self-select, right? Depending on what it deems to be. Uh, the best but um, I'm gonna talk about that and show you guys a full video and another one just because uh, this video is going to be way too long otherwise right so the length here you want to go for about 15 to 30 seconds what you will need again is the customer avatar who's your ideal audience what angle are you hitting and try to make all of your angles between the three different types of content pieces the same right so if you're someone suffering from neck pain Sure, that's a really broad angle, but can you niche it down? Can you go specifically to like desk workers or another broad audience that suffers from that particular um, problem? You can need to think about that this way. And then you have those three pieces of content that attack that one angle, okay? So what you will need is your customer avatar, right? You need a script, all right? So you can provide it to the UGC uh, creator. One key tip is if you guys have a low budget, I would highly, highly recommend either you filming it yourself or getting a partner or a friend to film it on your behalf, right? You can coach them to be ex like, to have tonality and to, you know, really kind of show pain and, and kind of make it feel authentic. That's the main purpose of UGC. And the problem with paid actors is that they sometimes fail to bring it through or show that authenticity, right? So, but if you're doing it, you can, you know, you can have that top of mind and really kind of hone into it. All right, tools to use again, right? Chat GPT, voiceover or a roll content. If you are doing the voiceover, I would, similar thing, I would voiceover it myself, right? Or someone else, like a friend or whatnot. You can even use 11 Labs, right? Or the TikTok voice generator to give you guys different variations as well as target different avatars. So for example, for TikTok, you can use the female voice. And then for 11 labs, you can use the AI Adam, or you can even do a voice simulator right now where you can upload some things, but I'll show you guys that in a different video as well. Okay. So now we've got another example right here on Atria. We've got, let's see what we have here. I think it's from Flux. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. So, all right, just got back from our run. I literally cannot say this enough. These shoes right here, my flux, are seriously a game changer for me. I am sore in the legs where I should be, and I am not sore in my feet, which is where I used to be. So get yourself a pair of flux if you're trying to get back into running. All right. So this one is just a straight out, straight out UGC, just talking about the particular product, right? The avatar, the angle that they're reaching is people who want to get back into running, but because their feet were hurting, they couldn't, right? So they're speaking, this guy's saying, oh, this is how I used to be, and now I'm able to run, and look, I've just come back from a run. And then what's the bridge? It's the actual product itself, right? So this is a powerful, powerful piece of content that has to be in your media mix, right? So. Guys, once you've got all of these, right, we're gonna show you, uh, in another video, I'm gonna show you guys exactly how to set this up, right? But if you have these three pieces of content, right, message testing, right, statics, we've got the keystone piece of content and then a UGC style video, and then just have like alternate hooks for the two video portions, you have plenty to get started. And this is where I really want to uh, kind of narrow and like nail this message through. At the beginning of your journey, when you're running ads, your ad account structure does not matter whatsoever, right? Obviously, there are some things that are going to make it easier and whatnot. However, the biggest, biggest impact that you can have or the biggest leverage act uh, like activity that you can take is creating good, good pieces of content that ha all have intention, right? And then you have a logical plan, a strategy, and then you can ex execute off of that. And then whenever you, uh, whenever you have like ad account structures, that's all like, honestly, it's personal preference. What do you guys like? Do you guys have like having more control? Do you guys like more efficiency, which is cost caps? Or do you like just leaving it all up to Facebook and focusing more on the creative, which is kind of like the CBO 322 method and so on and so forth, right? So guys, I hope this helped you guys. Um, feel free to get the links down below and I will catch you guys in the next one.